Hey. Hello. Hello there. Hi, hi there. Hi Mia. Hi Tara. 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 Hello. Hello. Oh, you're a carrot. No. It's Ryan. Hey. Wanna be in the vlog? No. <laughs> oh well. Really. Too late. Are we having burgers, Uncle Derek? Burgers and sausages, Adam. Ooh, cool. Barbecue is the best kind of summer. Get a burger. Burger with cucumber cheese, barbecue sauce, coleslaw, uh, lettuce, and probably something else. we had last night and uh, now I'm in Edinburgh it's a beautiful Monday morning and I'm heading in for work and meetings yeah okay I'm just like counting down the days until I go to America now <laughs> it's only like a week on Thursday yeah so I'm just like come on hello vlog in contrast to yesterday where it was like super nice it is raining today and it's cloudy so that's disappointing, uh, but uh, I'm going to get my braces tightened, and uh, yes, then go to the gym. Brace adjustment done, had a new, a couple of new wires put on, and something else which I'm not sure, and now I'm heading to the gym. Mm, food, big potato and chin and cheese and what else are we having? Beans and salad. One of my favorite kinds of dinner is big potato with all that stuff. <laughs> no. Why are you filming me? I'm vlogging. Do you? No. Oh. That was pretty nice actually. Huh? I had a I had a fun time eating that food. Sure Amy did as well. Salad? Hmm. Good afternoon vlog. I am coming to you today from this really bright area, which is just my wall, but for some reason it looks really bright on camera and now less bright because of the daylight that's coming in through the window. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to basically explain a bit about how I travel. So you may have seen recently me like traveling down to London and uh, traveling around the uh, London Underground and stuff uh, independently by myself. And um, as some of you may know, because of my uh, hair being white and uh, me wearing glasses, uh, I have a visual impairment. My hair being white is because I have albinism, which is a skin condition which affects, um, the la it means I have a lack of pigment in my skin, but also results in visual impairment. Um, so I have other eye conditions that means my vision isn't as good. Now before I explain how I deal with traveling, uh, I want to say that every person who has, is blind or partially sighted or has any kind of sight loss will have it differently. There is not one single uh, way of having sight loss, it's different for every person. There's so many different types of conditions out there, and there's so many things that people can have. So I just want to clear it up, like, for what, what works for me might not work for other people. So when I was younger, I used to travel by train with my parents, or when I would be flying somewhere, it would be with them, because we were going on holiday. And I slowly got used to traveling by train by myself, and figuring out ways of doing that independently, um, as I was doing more and more things by myself. And as I started traveling for my own reasons and for my own holidays, I got more and more used to flying. I initially would use assistance at the airports, but I've got more and more used to the airports and now I don't use that as much. And the same on the London Underground, the first time I went to London by myself, I used their assistance, but now I don't need to because I've gotten used to it and I've developed these tools and techniques along the way I can use to travel and do things independently. For someone like myself with sight loss, there can be a lot of barriers to traveling independently. Um, what I'm going to do is explain how I've used technology and how I've used different th techniques I've developed to overcome those barriers and challenges. So I'm going to use a recent trip to London because that's a good example. So getting to the airport, I travelled by train and tram, and I'm pretty familiar with the local trains here and the trams. But when I do travel using the trains, I'll use the Trainline app, which is an app 
that you can buy uh, train tickets through, but it also is really good for letting you see when the next train is to where you need to go, and what platforms it's going to be at, and when the time is, and that sort of thing. Now, interestingly, on the trip I just had, there was a complication in that uh, I had to get two trains, um, because I had to change at one train station, but the connecting train I had to get was cancelled, so when I got to the train station, I got off, and I thought I could get the bus, because I knew there was a bus at the airport, but instead, I looked on my phone, I looked at the app, and I saw that there was going to be another train coming, so I was able to plan that and go from there. So I've got to the point where I'm pretty familiar with Edinburgh Airport now. I know where the gates are generally and I know how to get around. And when I'm travelling in airports, the overhead signboards that tell you where the gates are and where things are, I'm usually pretty good at seeing because they're usually pretty big. Unfortunately, the screens that tell you the status of your flight are not the same. Generally, I can't see them very well because they're usually not as big the text and they're usually quite high up. Fortunately, some airlines like British Airways, their mobile app will tell you where your flight is leaving from, like which gate, and it will give you status updates on your flight. Unfortunately, this time I was flying with Ryanair, which they don't do, which is a little bit annoying. So all I had to do when I got to the airport was just ask someone at the check-in area, one of the staff, if they could help me identify what gate my flight would be leaving from. So I did that, went through, and got to my gate, and it was no problem. However, when I got to the gate, I realised that they had actually changed the gate to one that was a little bit further down. I was looking at the gate and I saw that it was not the flight to London. And so I just asked someone, they were like, oh yeah, it's down there. And I just went down and got on my flight. Unfortunately, when I, got, when I was going to Stansted on the way back from London, uh, they, there wasn't anyone there. So I went through security and what I did is I used my phone, I used the camera on my phone to point it at the information screens. I took a picture, I zoomed in and took a picture, so that way I could look at the picture on my phone and see, look at, for my flight and see when where my gate was. So that was how I navigated that. So on the London Underground, if you know London Underground, it's really busy and it's quite complicated. It's one of the most complicated subway systems in the world. It, it can be quite interesting because it could be really easy to get lost. There's been times on the London Underground where I've stood there for like five minutes walking around the station trying to find the right place to go. But like I said, I used to get assistance and I don't need to now because before I went into the Underground station, I'd look at my phone. Now, the tra Transport for London, uh, they have a website, tfl.gov.uk, and it has a mobile site. And you can go in there and you can say where you're coming from, where you need to go, and it will tell you what trains you need to get, which is great for anyone going to London because the Underground underground system is a nightmare. People could normally look at the train map that, you, that you'll see in underground stations, but unfortunately it's tiny and it's really difficult to navigate for me. So instead I would use the Transport for London website, put in where I was, put in where I needed to go, and it would tell me which lines I can get, where I need to change, and exactly how long it was going to take to get there. So it meant that when I was travelling I didn't need to faff around trying to see a map, and I could just use the instructions I had and very easily get from where I need was to where I needed to go. And when I was in the underground stations, the overhead signs were big enough that I was able to navigate around myself and to get to the platform I needed to get. And then when I got to the platform, the signs on the wall were also big enough that I could see how many stops it was to where I needed to get off, which saved me a few times because I could have got on the wrong side and been going in the wrong direction had it not been for those, for those information boards listing all the stops. And when all else fails, you just ask someone. So that's how I travel, and that's how I navigate around when I'm flying and when I'm in London and using trains and stuff. Like I said, it can be different for every person. What works for me might not work for other people with sight loss. Uh, it just really depends on your condition and what you have. And if you do have sight loss and you would like to travel, uh, it's not that scary. You can get assistance at basically anywhere you go. For example, the underground. Pretty much every underground train station in London will have assistance services that you can get and they're very good and in airports you can get assistance services and at train stations uh, I know ScotRail will provide assistance at major train stations as well that are staffed. Well thank you very much for watching the vlog. If you liked it please hit the like button below this video. Leave a comment if you thought it was helpful or if you liked the style let me know. And please do share the video with your friends and family and especially with anyone who you think it might be useful for or might help. I'd really appreciate that. And let me know if there's any more questions you guys have, feel free to ask away in the comments. I'm more than happy to answer, answer any questions about sight loss or about traveling with sight loss or my experiences of traveling. So thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next vlog. Adios. Wait, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and Facebook. Follow me on Facebook. What? Don't forget to... <laughs>
Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow you on Facebook, and vid.me. I would also very much appreciate that. Okay, bye. Really, this time. Okay, bye. Adios.